No matter how much you may enjoy mowing your lawn, I bet there are plenty of things you'd rather be doing on a weekend than spending an hour or two mowing that lawn under the hot summer sun. Today, I'm going to share with you a review of the Luba 2. It's an all-wheel drive, tech-packed robotic lawnmower that can conquer crazy slopes. I found the most complex terrain yard and we're going to see if it can conquer that yard. And at the end of this video, I'm going to tell you who should buy the Luba 2. And to be honest, robotic lawnmowers have never really interested me in the past just because the tech was lacking and the price was high. Well, I'm going to officially proclaim that 2024 is the year of the robotic lawnmower, and this is why. The Luba 2 came packaged great. It was really organized, very easy to take out of the box. Everything came in great condition. Not too bad. I was expecting this to feel a little heavier. It's got two eyes for binocular 3D vision. The nice thing about these bolts is they put Loctite or thread locker on them, that blue stuff. The rise of the robotic lawnmower has finally reached a point where tech is pretty darn good and the prices, while still on the pricey side, may make sense for some. Equipped with proximity sensors, computer vision, and highly accurate GPS systems, devices like the Luba 2 are revolutionizing the market. Utilizing RTK GPS technology, which requires a base station and offers precise location tracking down to the centimeter, this feature along with sensors and advanced computer vision allows the mowers to navigate around obstacles and assure safety by shutting off when lifted or touched. Okay, now we're going to head over to my friend's house to set up this Luba 2 lawnmower. And while we do that, my lawn is going to be mowed by the Segway Navimo multitasking. Okay, so first off, let's clear the air. Luba 2, Luba 2, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce this. I'm either going to say Luba or Luba. I'll switch off. You let me know down in the comments below what the accurate pronunciation is. All right, with the Luba 2, the nice thing about this and with most of the modern robotic lawnmowers these days is you don't have to put down that cumbersome perimeter wire anymore. What you're going to need is a clear view of the sky to set up an antenna because the antenna needs to be able to connect with the RTK GPS systems up above and you're also going to need a power outlet. The Luba 2 requires an initial mapping of the lawn via the mobile app. It's a process that involves guiding the mower around the yard to set the boundaries. So basically, you walk around with your mower, controlling it with the phone app, and then you set the boundaries that way. The Luba 2 offers more user-friendly experience, allowing for easier adjustments and mapping of different lawn zones than I experienced with the Segway. Once everything is mapped, Let's put Luba to work. The all-wheel drive Luba 2 comes in two versions. There's the original or standard version, which cuts grass height from one inch to 2.7 inches. That's if you like your grass really short. And then there's the H version, which is the version I got. The H version allows you to go anywhere from 2.2 inches to 4.0 inches. I ended up going with the H version because I like grass taller, which encourages a stronger root system and gives my lawn the best chance of surviving dry, hot summers. Both the standard and the H version of the Loop 2 come in varying battery sizes. Okay, this is Jimmy from the future and I have to let you know what I just said there about the different battery sizes between the different model mowers, it's actually false, kind of. And I'll explain the whole thing at the end of the video. Just know that I was pretty shocked when our team, while researching for this video, found this out and you're going to want to hear this. In the meanwhile, make sure to mow down that like button and let's get back to our regularly scheduled program. And that's the beauty of these robot lawnmowers because the tech is good enough and it's smart enough to know that even if it can't finish a yard in one charge, when it's running low on batteries at around 15%, it automatically knows to go back to its station, charge up, and then continue on right where it left off. With a huge yard, sometimes even with a big battery, it can take multiple charges to finish 
one mow, especially if you have really high, rough grass. Where the Luba 2 excels is its ability to handle rough terrain and slopes. With its all-wheel drive system, we're going to take it on hills, we're going to take it over potholes, we're going to take it in ditches and ravines, and we're going to see how it handles. The Luba 2 will maintain a constantly cut lawn with minimal intervention on even the toughest terrain, requiring only occasional trimming in areas the mower can't reach. This is Tyler's yard, or maybe I should say field. This place is huge. Tell us about your normal maintenance, how long it takes you to mow this thing and how you do it. Normally it takes me like an hour and I've got a riding lawn mower. I put on my uh, my noise canceling headphones and just you know mow it all down. But it is a time consuming process. Last week I did it, I got sunburned because I was <laughs> on the mower for so long. Um, but I'm going out of town here for a couple of weeks, so having this little guy automate this is actually really interesting because it'll help alleviate some uh, some grass angst while I'm gone. And tell us where you're going. I uh, go into Samoa, so I'm doing a humanitarian trip with my son. So we're going to be building a domestic violence shelter out there and uh, it'll be really cool, but it's a long time to be gone from all the household chores. He'll be out of the country. This large field is not going to mow itself. You have kids. What are the chances of them mowing this? <laughs> <laughs> the chance of them mowing the field is zero. They'll, <laughs> they'll mow like the normal grass up by the house, but uh, nobody wants to take on this beast because it takes so long. And you know, there are some things you got to dodge. You got to dodge like our septic tank little things you gotta dodge or some new sprinkler lines so it's got some landmines out here too that so far the robot's been able to navigate the septic little tanks it it actually just bumps into yeah. it, stops and then goes around my kids would just feature. plow right through them probably <laughs> so the robot's smarter than my kids probably well i wanted to see how this would do we already had it mow the side of your house right yeah, there so that great. line right there yeah and uh yeah i programmed it to mow this and it looks like coconut Coco's coco is, is loving this this is amazing because i when i was walking through here earlier yeah. it was going up to like mid shin yeah it was pretty tall and it is in some tall stuff here and let's see if it's able to get itself out of this that's that is some tall grass and that's the advantage of the all-wheel drive system the first time is going to be pretty rough just because this was all grass so it's going to be patchy then we'll have it go back charge run it through a second time and we'll see this is some tall stuff here look at how tall this is incredible Just powering through it i think this is the ultimate test and i am excited to see how this is going to fail and how this thing is going to shine so thanks a lot for letting us use your Absolutely. yard and good luck in some more. Appreciate it. Okay, let's dive into the pros and cons. It is the best looking robotic lawnmower on the market. It looks sleek. I mean, it really appeals to the, the masculine side, looking just like a, a race car, something that you'd see a Formula One race car. This thing looks amazing. The all-wheel drive system, it is legit. We took it through its paces, going up rocky trails, going through ditches, ravines, going through really tall grass on the control tests going up steep boards to give you an idea of the angle of this this is 23 degrees let's increase that angle see what happens so it says 39 39 and look at that angle i don't think it's gonna make it but we will see It did things that the Segway Navimo could not even dream of doing. So the all-wheel drive, amazing, especially if you have complex terrain in your yard. The system is a dual cutting system, so it cuts a larger area, it cuts a cleaner area with the two rotating motors. On top of that, it's very quiet, surprisingly quiet. It's going to be a little bit louder than your Segway with only one rotating disc, and that makes sense. You have double the discs, but still super quiet. You could have an easy phone conversation or a conversation with someone with that mower right next to you. Wouldn't be a big deal. I love that it's smart enough to know when it's cutting Tyler's lawn and he needs to go back to charge, it'll go back to the charging station on its own. It'll charge up to 80% and then it'll continue mowing. Anyone that knows anything about batteries will know that charging 
up to 80%, that goes fast. It's from 80 to 100%, that takes a long, long time to charge. In a battery, you're trying to fill up this battery with all these electrons to be used. And it, imagine it being like a big parking lot. And when the electrons are coming in and the parking lot is empty, super easy to find a place to park. But once the parking lot is about 80% full, trying to find those random empty parking spots in that parking lot can be tough and it takes a lot longer. I love that the Luba 2 is smart enough to know that at 80%, that's good enough, let's keep mowing. It's good for the battery and it gets it out mowing much quicker. There are a couple things that the Luba 2 has that the Segway does not. I mean, we've talked about the all-wheel drive, the dual cutting discs. We've talked about the, its ability to charge quick up to 80%. The other thing too is it has this first person view where I can actually go on and watch from the cameras of the Luba 2 what it's doing exactly. It's a first person view of watching my robot mower driving around. It's super cool. I mean, I just like sitting there and watching it go. Really handy too when it gets stuck, you can go in and see what exactly is going on. There's once where the workers who were doing landscaping work left a trash bag on the lawn and that trash bag got tangled up on the wheels of the Luba 2. I was able to go on the first person view, see what was happening, call up uh, one of Tyler's sons who went out, took off the bag, pressed start and it just continued mowing. I will say using the phone to control this guy, pretty fun. It's like driving a little RC car. What's up buddy? This is the most fun I've ever had with a lawnmower. Hey buddy. The other thing that I love is the app. On the app, you're able to fine tune and really customize things just the way you like it. From scheduling the time and day of mowing your lawn to the angle and the direction that you want it mowed, the height of the mow, all those things, very customizable through the app. Also through the app, if you wanna have fun, you can set different shapes so that it can mow and leave a shape on the lawn. So I had the mower mow this just yesterday and you can see the lines that it left. I don't know if it shows up on the camera, but the lines it makes, really nice. I actually think the lines that the Lebo makes is better than the Segway. Let's talk about the things that I don't like about the Luba 2. And hopefully this feedback is something that the company will be able to take and make improvements. One of the glaring things that they could improve right off the bat is their webpage. I was trying to go to their website to get some information and some specs and the site was just loading so slow. It's probably just a temporary thing. Go visit the site right now. There's a link down below and tell me, is their site still painfully slow or not? And it was that slow website that caused us to turn to Reddit to start poking around and it was on Reddit that we discovered that the Luba 3000, 5000, and 10,000 models all have the exact same internal hardware, including the battery. Let me explain. Go to the Momotion website and scroll down to the Luba 2 section and you'll find a chart explaining the differences between the models. The bigger the model number, the more expensive it is, and the more you can mow. Most would assume that the bigger the model number, the bigger the battery, but that's not quite right. While the 1000 model has a small battery, all the other models have the exact same battery size, and in fact, they all have the exact same internal hardware and they all weigh the same. The only difference is the internal memory and the programming for how many zones and how much area that mower can remember to mow. So if you're thinking about buying the bigger, most expensive model, thinking that you're gonna get the biggest battery and you'll be able to mow more and recharge less, think again. The other issue is the Luba 2, when it first comes out right out of the box, it needs some updating. And when I say updating, I mean a lot of updating. We hit some roadblocks, right, with the way that it connects to your Wi-Fi. It was just a huge pain in the butt. They need to streamline that process or have these already sent out with a more updated version of the firmware software. The other thing that I don't like about this is the provided instructions were very sparse. Like, 
not very helpful at all. And that's why I had to turn to the website, which was way too slow. And then I ended up on different Reddit forums and online forums in order to get some help. The app initial versions were really, really clunky, but I just did the most recent update and it is actually pretty streamlined. So the app now it's actually pretty streamlined and it's pretty good. For some reason on the Lupa 2, in order to get it to work, you need to insert a security key. It's a little orange key that you plug into the back and without it, it doesn't work. Couple things, why do we need that? Number one, someone explained to me in the comments below. Number two, the security key itself is not very secure. It doesn't click in, it doesn't latch in, it's not protected. It's actually very exposed and can easily be pulled out the back. So if someone knew what they were doing or if it was on really rough terrain and the security key were to just fall out on its own, I guess you're out of luck. My segue, it will mow in one direction for one mow, and then the next mow, it'll mow in an alternate direction. So you can get maybe crisscross patterns. It prevents it from getting ruts. The Luba 2, at least as of right now, will not allow automatic alternating of mow patterns. It'll just mow the same direction every time. You can go into the app though and change the direction the degree in which you want it to mow. Hopefully that's something they can fix with a future update. The sleek design of the Luba 2 is complemented by that really glossy white finish, which looks fantastic. But the problem with the glossy white finish is it shows dirt so easily. And when you're that low to the ground and you're mowing the lawn, it gets dirty really easily. And when it's dirty, it doesn't look as sharp. The Luba 2 is also missing a light. The Segway actually has a light, and the light turns on when it's mowing at night, which has two advantages. Number one, it helps the camera see better where it is to use the camera as its positioning unit. And then number two, it helps others see it. The Luba 2 doesn't have a light, so at night, you can't really see it that well. And number two, once it goes dark, the camera, the onboard camera, does not work. And that's my next point. It has very poor night performance. I don't know if it just doesn't connect as well with the GPS or if it's because it can't see with the cameras what it's doing. But at night, I'm finding that it's getting stuck and it's getting out of bounds more often than it is during the day. I did say that one of the things that I love about this Luba 2 is the first person control, how I can watch it and actually see through the cameras of the Luba 2 what it's doing. With Bluetooth connection, you can control it while watching its onboard cameras. The problem is you can't control the Luba 2 through the onboard cameras if you're trying to connect through Wi-Fi or through data. That I feel like is a big drawback, especially if I am not home and it kind of gets stuck or comes across an obstacle that it doesn't know what to do, I would love to be able to take control through the onboard cameras and back it up out of its little sticky situation so that it can continue mowing the lawn instead of having to wait for me to come home, get it unstuck. There are a lot of moving parts on the Luba 2. With the suspension, it allows the wheels to move up and down so that you get a very nice even cut so that it can have the traction it needs when it's going over rough terrain and potholes. With the all-wheel drive though, you've got four motors, you've got suspension, you have two cutting discs, you have the cutting discs that motorize up and down to adjust the cut height. But you also have a bumper that when it hits things, it's a sensor. And so I just see that there may be more maintenance needed on this device than say the Segway, which is actually a really simple design. I've been running the Luba 2 every day on this huge yard. I could see over time a part failing, maybe the bumper failing, maybe the camera getting knocked off because it kind of sticks up high, maybe a, a one of the motors of the all-wheel drives going out. And in those instances, you're going to have to find a way to get this fixed. So this brings us to our final question. Who should buy the Luba 2? If you're the type of person who could be doing something more fun or more important than mowing your lawn, then the Luba 2 may be for you. Especially if you have a yard that has complex terrain with really steep slopes. Now, if you have a relatively simple yard that's flat, really easy to mow, 
then maybe something like the Segway Navimo I series is best for you. That's what I have in my yard and I really don't have any issues other than it tends to get stuck a couple places in my yard where I have some undulations. Other than that, it's performed great. The Navimo is much less expensive, it's a much simpler device, and if you have a simple yard, maybe that's what you want. But if you have a more complex type lawn with tall grass, weeds, rugged terrain, obstacles, potholes, steep slopes, just like Tyler's yard, then the Luba 2 is easily the best choice. In fact, Tyler texted me right before he left for Samoa asking me how he could get one of these Luba 2s for himself. Check out our full written review at FreshyCharge.com and when you guys mow, mow with a robot.